So tonight's talk is a. Uh, it's actually titled uh, um, "In the Land of the Rising Sun: Worshipping at Orientum, that's towards the the east." So uh, just again to uh, recap, this is a four talk in a four part series. So the last talk uh, we've had it here in, in Thursdays in March in the Catholic Central Library, and uh, this uh, is part of a a series taking place here in the Catholic Central Library on the Thursdays of Lent. The um, the overall theme is on the how to build a Catholic uh, revival based on a movement towards a deeper understanding of the Catholic cosmos. Part of this movement is to establish confidence in the authority of the Word of God uh, and in the Scriptures. Um, so the, the first talk was about uh, which Bible, you know, the uh, translation should we use. And we looked at the Masoretic, which modern English translations are based on, and the Septuagint, which is an old Greek translation of the uh, scriptures going back before Christ. And we uh, came you know, down on the side of the Septuagint because it was more precise. Um, the... The first, uh, uh, then the second, uh, last uh, talk was um, uh, about the uh, Genesis, the first chapter of Genesis and the tablet theory, or, or the book of Genesis, and the, it was called the tablet theory uh, of Genesis, and it was the idea that uh, that uh, Genesis was a, a written document, uh, you know, that was written on tablets as a by eyewitnesses. Um, so it was, in fact, you know, part of like his history, you know, uh, actual history. So uh, as opposed to the the documentary uh, theory, which many modern scholars believe, and so uh, so there are two ways that scholars interpret Genesis. One was, uh, you know, uh, denies Moses's authorship. That would be the documentary. They say it's written. You know, six century BC, hundreds, thousands of years after Moses lived, you know, in in exile in Babylon, and if, uh, and the other affirms the uh, Moses's authorship. That's the tablet theory. Um, so it is, uh, yeah, one's based on a, an evolutionary kind of worldview, which is the documentary. And one's based on a view of Genesis as history. So, and we looked then, you know, how this, uh, the idea that Genesis is history is very uncomfortable for mainstream modern scholars because uh, it goes against their evolutionary worldview. So if, if uh, all, if chapters, you know, 2 to 49 are history, they probably think, well, then chapter one, which talks about the creation of the, the world, must be history too, you know. <laughs> and that's uh, that's very uncomfortable for many people today. The idea that uh, uh, God actually made the world, like he said in the Bible. Mm. Uh, so the, the third... Uh, Last week's uh, talk was on the, the gospel in the stars uh, and how God revealed his message of redemption to the peoples by coding it in the names of the constellations and the individual stars that make them up. We saw how the Chinese were able to uh, record the birth and death of Christ from the stars and of how the three wise kings knew of the virgin birth of the Son of God we also looked at the relationship between the uh, stars and angels, and then yeah, you know, there's this kind of connection in the, the Bible. You know, often calls the angels stars, stars angels. You know, there's this sort of connection uh, underlying. Uh, and finally, we uh, commented on how uh, the Big Bang cosmology uh, is failing as a scientific theory, yet we would. We'll cling to it over the 
the word of God, you know. Um, uh, so the, the title of today's talk, as I said, was uh, In the Land of the Rising Sun. So worshipping towards the east or ad orientum. So for most Catholics today, geography has very little to do with worship. But this is a, a very recent development. Muslims, when they pray, face towards uh, Mecca. And the Jews, certainly in the past, when they prayed, they faced towards Jerusalem, uh, the holy city. And, and Christians also wanted to pray uh, you know, where Christ is. And uh, that is towards the east. Uh, uh, they just didn't come up with this out of the blue. Like they said, oh, we have to pray some direction. Oh, we'll pray east. You know, now there's a... There's a there's a reason for it, you know. Uh, so the John Damascene, one of the doctors at the church, he lived in about seven hundreds in Syria, and he talks about this uh, uh, why why we uh, face east when when we when they, especially at mass, you know, uh, why do the is the altar facing east? So it's not without reason or by chance that we worship towards the east, since therefore God is spiritual light and christ is called in the scriptures son of righteousness and day spring the east is the direction that must be assigned to his worship for everything good must be assigned to him from whom every good thing arises indeed the divine david also says sing unto god ye kingdoms of the earth O sing praises unto the lord to him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens towards the east Moreover, the scripture also says, and God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. When he had transgressed his command, he expelled him and made him to dwell over against the delights of paradise, which clearly is the West. So when we worship God, seeking and striving after our old fatherland, moreover, the tent of Moses had its veil and mercy see towards the east. And the tribe of Judah is the most precious, uh, as the most precious pitched their camp on the east. Also in the celebrated temple of Solomon, the gate of the Lord was placed eastward. Moreover, Christ, when he hung on the cross, had his face to towards the west. And so we worship, striving after him. And when he was received again into heaven, he was born towards the east as he ascended to the east. And thus his apostles worship him, and thus we he will come again in the way in which they beheld him going towards heaven. As the Lord himself said, As the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So then, in expectation of his coming, we worship towards the east. But this tradition of the apostles is unwritten, for much that has been handed down to us by tradition is unwritten. So, and uh, St. Basil the Great, he's one of the Eastern doctors of the church. Uh, he also uh, claims that the, this uh, um, way of worshipping towards the East comes from the, the apostles. Um, and so do many of the uh, other fathers, like, you know, so it was from the beginning, uh, uh, we we always prayed ad orientum um, towards the rising sun. So uh, the, and the letter to the Hebrews uh, compares Jesus to the the high priest in the temple, who uh, would enter the sanctuary and pray uh, facing the tabernacle. So the idea of the priest and the people praising uh, praying towards the tabernacle was already a long established Jewish tradition. Um, and there's also a parallel with the synagogues. Uh, uh, synagogues, they would have a, like a little Ark of the Covenant, you know, and they put the scrolls, the, you know, the Word of God, into the, the Ark. And they would uh, face, when they prayed, they would face the this Ark, you know. Uh, and uh, and Christian, so it, but the, when they were praying, so they were praying beyond the ark, you know, towards Jeru Jerusalem, because the ark represented 
Jerusalem. So they, when they were, they were praying, they were all united in, in praying towards Jerusalem. And Christians as well then, uh, you know, they had a tabernacle, you know, with the word of God in it. And they prayed facing the tabernacle. So again, uh, it was natural, you know, uh, the continuation with this praying uh, east, you know, with the priest facing the altar uh, and the people behind him praying with him. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I just lost my uh, place there. So we also, yeah, Psalm uh, uh, 18, uh, which we had last week, talks about the... Uh, the sun, you know, uh, coming from its uh, uh, chamber uh, like a bridegroom. Uh, and the fathers of the church saw this as referring to uh, um, Christ and, and the Virgin Mary. So I'm just reading from uh, Cardinal Ratzinger, um, who was Pope Benedict XVI. And he wrote a book called The Spirit of the, the Liturgy. And he mentions this. And he says, uh, uh, Christians look towards the east, the rising sun. This is not a case of Christians worshipping the sun, but of the cosmos speaking of Christ. So the, the song of the sun in uh, Psalm 18 is interpreted as a song about Christ when it says, The sun comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber. It is rising uh, its rising is from the end of the heavens to its circuit to the end of them. This psalm proceeds directly from applauding creation to praising the law. Christians interpret it in terms of Christ, who is the living word, the eternal Logos, and thus the true light of history, who came forth in Bethlehem from the bridal chamber of the Virgin Mother, and now pours out his light on all the world. So the East supersedes the Jerusalem. Uh, uh, temple as the as a symbol of Christ, represented by the sun, uh, is the place of the Shekinah, the true throne of the living God. So the yeah, so the Christians saw the the sun, you know, as as pointing towards Christ, you know, um, and it, it's not we worship the sun, we don't. It's but the cosmos speaks. You know of Christ as the, you know the sun as pointing to Christ, and um, so uh, yeah, so the so the yeah like so the rising sun is the um, uh, the most like the most beautiful thing the the ancients could behold is the you know the sun rising in the morning and. Uh, so when the, 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 the priest holds up the, the host for elevation, uh, they compare that to, you know, the uh, like the presence of God. Because in, in um, Luke uh, uh, chapter 2, the, it's, a, it's, a psalm, or it's a canticle that's prayed every morning by the church called the Benedictus. Uh, and the... Uh, it's the song of Zechariah uh, about John the Baptist, and he says, and and uh, uh, and through the uh, and thou child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for thou shalt go uh, before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, unto the remission of their sins, through the bowels of mercy of our God, in which the Orient from on high. Uh, has visitors, so it's like or the Orient and High is the dawn from high, or the the rising sun has visitors. So the, he's saying the presence of God is like the 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 dawn, uh, the sun rising at dawn, uh, and so the uh, when the the priest prays, does the consecration of the host, you know, the presence of God becomes uh, uh, manifest, you know, and and they compare it to the it's like the sun rising and uh, the rays of forgiveness you know shining out touching everyone and um, you know and it 
Zechariah also talks about you know Jesus, the Son of Justice, the Messiah, the Son of Justice, who will come with healing in his rays. So, uh, yeah, and again, the, the, and we, the, so the, the when we worship Jesus and we communion with him, we're meant to be transformed as a people into him. You know that Jesus is meant to live in us. Uh, Saint Paul says, you know, it's no no longer I live, but Christ who lives in in, in me. Um, and and not only uh, it's not only just we we are transformed uh, from, as when the Father said from glory to glory, but the, the the whole of creation is going to be transformed as well through the uh, the Eucharist, you know, because uh, Saint Paul says that the the whole of creation groans uh, and awaits the the redemptions of the Son of God, so. Uh, creation is somehow tied in with humanity uh, and th- and this is in Genesis again Adam uh, Adam was made you know king of the uh, uh, of the earth you know and all all the creatures were uh, under his dominion you know uh, and nature uh, was under his dominion just as a, a in like in a parallel way that God is above the angels so Adam was above the the creatures like you know um but when adam fell the creation fell with him uh and so death came into the creation as well so creation wasn't meant for for, for death either like you know it was it was meant to be eternal um so when we, yeah adam fell sin death came into creation as well uh and we have the, the the seasons, and it's waiting for the the redemption, you know, that Christ has has brought, you know, where eventually the whole earth will be renewed in the, the you know, when He comes again. We have a new heaven and a new earth, and um, so the yeah, so the 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 rising sun uh, and facing east is is part of the cos what is called the cosmic uh, uh, aspect of the liturgy, you know. That the uh, the liturgy is not just about us. It's it's the whole of the 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 earth, the whole of the universe. You know, the cosmos praying to God. You know, being renewed uh, in God. And uh, one of the actually canticles that uh, is sung quite often in the liturgy in of the hours is a. The song of the three young men in the in the fire, you know, uh, in Daniel, you know, the book of Daniel, and they say uh, they have the you know the sun and moon praising the Lord, you know the uh, thunder and lightning praising the Lord, frost and cold, you know, heat somewhere heat and winter cold praising the Lord, you know all the wild animals and the tame praising the Lord, the, the birds and the fishes praising the Lord, so it's like you know the the, the the purpose of the, the creation was to to praise God, like it was like a, t- a temple, like you know, in in macro size, like you know, the whole of creation, the cosmos is like a a a, t- a temple, and man was the holy of holies, like you know, where God uh, resided. So, uh, uh, just the uh, you know another. Uh, uh aspect of this is um so yeah uh, uh, matthew uh, 24 uh, uh, 30 um they yeah uh, jesus says that then on the he talks about the last days then on the last day Will uh, appear the son of the the sign of the son of man in the heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will uh, mourn, and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. So the sign of the son of man. Uh, now this is again from Colonel Rassiger. Is the the pierced one is the cross which has now uh, become the sign of victory. Of the risen one, thus the symbolism of the cross uh, merges with that of the east. So, 
Yeah. So yeah, so the, yeah, when we look into the east, it, it's it's we're also looking towards the, the second coming of Christ because he he that's where he'll come from the east, you know, as as the angels told the the, the apostles, you know, he'll come the same way that he went, you know. So he ascended towards the east, and and we're expecting him to come from the the east. So so it's a when we pray towards the east, it's a, a kind of a looking forward, you know, to the coming of Christ. Whereas the way uh, where we pray, say like we do today, as a memorial, where we're looking just back uh, at at the Last Supper, you know, uh, we lose that sort of uh, forward looking, you know, uh, to the Second Coming. But uh, yeah, so the and and uh, and Jesus says so just before he comes. The whole world will see the sign of the Son of Man, the victory of the cross, uh, in the skies. Because the the cross is the the like uh, the sign of our victory over death. You know, it's the love of God is manifest on the cross. Uh, Saint John calls it his throne. You know, on the cross, um, and behind the sign of the cross stands Jesus. You know, and every knee will bow, even the devils will bow. And kneel uh, at the at the cross, you know, the sign of the cross. So the the cross is a hugely uh, powerful uh, sign, a sign of Son of Man Himself, and uh, it's it's uh, merged with the uh, praying east, you know, because that's where uh, we'd see the sign in the sky uh, when He comes again. So. Uh, it's so it's also the yeah, the sign of God's sacrifice, you know, uh, and and so it's a reminder of the, you know that the the mass itself is a sacrifice uh, when we pray pray east, you know, and um, we're praying towards the the cross and the rising sun, and it's uh, so it's good we have these two symbols like the, the cross and the rising sun because it's the uh, the death and resurrection of Christ, you know, as is always seen as one event they're not kind of two separate events it's a passing through that's where passover comes from the it's passing from death into into life uh one event and um, so the the yeah now the the turning so yeah how can we have uh we've all of this History and as well as that, it, it this was universal uh, by Christians, the Orthodox Church, all the Orthodox churches throughout time, uh, Byzantine Rite churches, and the Latin Rite churches everywhere. Everyone uh, prayed um, towards the East. It was just universal. But in the sixties, uh, people kind of uh, uh, lost. They lost the knowledge. Yeah, they they were praying towards the east, but they didn't they didn't understand why. So people said, you know, they had phrases like, "People, oh, you're you're praying to the wall," or "You're praying with the the, the priest is praying with the back to the people." These sort of ideas were common, uh, and the the full theology and the richness of praying towards the east was kind of lost. Uh, and uh, as part of the reform. Uh, of the liturgy in the 60s uh, you know a group of experts scholarly uh, you know made this rubric that uh, uh, because they thought it was um, what the early church did that the priest would face the people uh, and now they were mistaken in that it was a false uh, uh, you know they it's it's been since showing that that was wrong, you know, but uh, uh, and and uh, as well as that, the 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 guy who was in charge of the uh, you know the new new order mass, he, he was, it turns out he was a a Freemason and he was sent off to Iran to do penance, <laughs> but uh, so you you have a lot of uh. Kind of Protestant uh, influences it came into the uh, uh, new mass, and mm. um, and what this 
this turning to the people kind of radically actually changes how we worship. So it, it's much more Protestantized because uh, the it's no longer where God is the center, but the priest is the the center, you know. And it's about they made it about oh, it's communion. It's a it's a meal. You know, it's a, a, a we're celebrating a communion meal, and we're ce- celebrating the community, and and so you had this kind of circle, sort of uh, um, kind of a way of doing things, like with the priest and the and the people, uh, and what it do, it de-emphasizes, you know, this first of all the sacrifice, like you know, you're no longer facing the you know the cross, and you're no longer like the rising sun. Uh, and uh, you know you this dialogue sort of thing, uh, and it's more about the uh, uh, celebrating the community rather than uh, you know reverencing God, what God has done. So, like I remember uh, being to a, a family, you know, one of these family uh, masses, children's masses, uh, and now and everyone was very sincere, like you know, and they. They were doing new readings and they did their uh, something with the gospel, like you know, a kind of a, an explanation. And then they had a young guy playing the, the violin for the offertory. And but what struck me was that, uh, you know, if the priest didn't bother with the consecration, it wouldn't have been missed, you know, because it, it, it was no longer the. Just the, the you know the high point of a of the, the the service. It was just another part of the this communal uh, service, and that if you left it out, then it, you know it wouldn't particularly. <laughs> maybe people wouldn't even care, like you know. It was more about celebrating ourselves, like you know, uh, what we are doing, you know, um, and unfortunately. Uh, this has a, you know, it's it's like a, a terrible effect on on liturgy, you know, um, and the way we celebrate liturgy. So our, our liturgies have become kind of banal, um, um, and lacking in reverence uh, and holiness. Um, yeah. So I'll just read from uh, Cardinal Ratzinger what he. He thinks of it, you know. Uh, so, and he thinks it's facing east. Is, it's not one of these incidental things. It's actually essential to the uh, the way we worship. You know, uh, it's it's been part of our history, like you know, of our tradition, um, passed on from the apostles. It, it's it's an essential way of. Uh, so, it would surely be a mistake to uh, reject all. The reforms of our century wholesale when the altar was very remote from the faithful it was right to move it back to the people in cathedrals this made it possible to recover the tradition of having the altar at the crossing the meeting point of the nave and the presbyterium it also important clearly to distinguish the place for the liturgy of the word from the place of the uh, for the properly eucharistic liturgy for the liturgy of the word is about speaking and responding, and so a face-to-face exchange between proclaimer and hearer does make sense. In the psalm, the hearer internalizes what he has heard and takes it into himself and transforms it into prayer so that it becomes a response. On the other hand, common turning to the east during the Eucharistic prayer remains essential. This is not a case of something accidental but of what is essential. Looking at the priest has no importance. What matters is looking together at the Lord. It is not now a question of dialogue, but of common worship, of setting off toward the one who is to come. What corresponds with the reality of what is happening is not close, a close, the closed circle, but the common movement towards, a common movement forward expressed in a common direction for prayer. So uh, that's uh, um, basically it. So the uh, again, um, 
the you know, like there's been Pope Benedict, Cardinal Sarah has called for a, a turn to a, a, the Ad Orientum, and so has a, a bishop in, in um, on Arizona uh, or New Mexico, uh, Bishop Gall, I think is his name. He's called for his priest to start praying uh, Ad Orientum. But uh, usually it just finds resistance, you know. Uh, and uh, again, I, th I think some of that resistance is probably as well the idea of the rising sun is to, uh, it goes against that sort of evolutionary kind of big bang idea that, you know, of the universe, you know, we don't like to think of the, the earth as uh, unmoving and the, the sun moving, you know. Uh, so again, uh, but this is how the Lord uh, says the world is, you know, in, in his in his words, you know, how he created it. Um, and so I, I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, to, to embrace that, like, you know, the, the, and, and there's as much now scientific evidence for, you know, geocentrism, which is the earth is unmoving at the center of the, uh, universe. Uh, and that would come as a big surprise to most people, but uh, it and, and it's because the I suppose the academic world is uh, and the scientific world has a bias against uh, you know a Christian worldview. You know it, it does everything it can to uh, avoid that. You know so it, when it looks at the data, it looks at a prejudice. It's, it's ideology. E uh, uh, driven by I ideology, you know, their evolutionary worldview, materialistic uh, mm. worldview um, that interprets the, the data. But there is uh, strong evidence to show that the, the, art, the earth is stationary um, and uh, at the center of the universe. Uh, and I think we need to embrace that, like, you know, and, and bring that into our worship. Uh, and let our worship uh, transform us, and not just transform, you know, us on Sundays, like transform every aspect of our lives, of what we do. Uh, this worldview was the, you know, how we, you know, work, how we play, how we educate, how we see things, you know, what we stand for, you know, uh, what we believe is right and wrong, uh, the laws we make, uh, how we view marriage, how we view uh everything you know um so again i think this is the fourth as i say the fourth pillar uh, in the uh this catholic revival and so the four pillars again are again use the use of the the septuagint translation you know uh, in the way we in our psalms and you know the way we pray and in the liturgy but also, you know, uh, just as this book, uh, especially in, if we're doing archaeology, you know, it, it's a more accurate uh, book. Um, to open the past, then there's the tablet theory, the idea of Genesis as history, uh, and then the, the gospel and the stars, you know, the cosmos as being, uh, you know, God's creation. It's so, it, like it's... Uh, it, it speaks to us like you know it's not just random mechanical stuff mm. it's actual uh it's 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 there for a purpose and it speaks to us creation speaks to us uh and it's it's somehow creation and the, the spiritual world influences that uh creation you know or substantiates it in some way uh, and then the uh fourth i think pillar is um uh, yeah, the we need to pray uh, facing the east uh, in the mass. We turn to Ad Orientum uh, worship, and also when we not just when we look at the the cosmological aspect 
it, it's what strikes us the beauty, like you know, the rising sun is the beauty uh, of, of God, and so, so are that's where the Gregorian chant as well, and the it's the beauty, like you know, that should be in our liturgies, you know, how, how we celebrate uh, our, our liturgy, and it, so the uh, so yeah, so and then after Easter, we hope to go more into the whole exposed like you know uh creation versus evolution you know and uh creation versus the, the whole big bang uh and uh, and show the, the the scientific evidence for uh for god's you know how god says he created the world and um, and uh yeah and yeah, so that's it, really. Does anyone have any questions? Could you repeat it all? Because I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm lucky I've recorded it, so I, I can send you the recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope you're right. It's the most exciting. <laughs> I'm but, uh. Yeah, I recorded it too as well. So. That's great. Yeah. You mentioned yes. that the, the Jews prayed yeah. to the Holy of Hol to the Ark, and the chief priest was only let go in. I read this book um, by this. He wouldn't agree with you probably, but it was a that um, he wrote a book, The Great Partnership, this rabbi at Science and Religion, Rabbi Sachs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, I think it was in that one. He mentions that. And he was very good because he was having a look at his own people, his own yeah. traditions. And the only time the Jews were getting on was when they had, when they were carrying the ark at one period, and they settled it down in the, at night in the desert. And the 12 tribes would li line up in unison. And they, were, they were all lined up properly facing the ark at night. <laughs> That's what I'm Right. But he said it was, there was, and one of the tribes was in responsible for looking after the Levites. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It was interesting. He said that they were sort of yeah. in unison, and everyone was in the same way, and they weren't arguing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I actually there's, there's another aspect of this as well that, that I, I maybe and it'll be another talk is a the Marian aspect of this mm -hmm. of of creation. So as well, mm -hmm. so like the. The earth is like a, a, it's like an icon for our, our lady or a type of our lady. So, uh, both the, the, uh, the like the, they say the Holy Spirit hovered over both. You know, mm. both uh, the earth kind of gave birth to Adam, and um, Mary gave birth to the second Adam. You know, um, yeah. uh, both are you know we call it the Virgin Earth and the Virgin Mary, mm. um. And and there's uh, other parallels uh, uh, as well, like you know. So uh, the, the yeah the cre creation points towards the mother and and child, like you know mm -hmm. that it, it's at the heart of the worship as well, you know. So um, so yeah, just yeah the centrality of our lady i'll I'll have to do another day of what you're saying is that science and uh, people who are maybe too big too clever have become very clever can't really believe um you know can't believe in god but everything is just sort of a mechanical thing yeah and i was thinking of that like say you take you know you mentioned your lady and then the saints and you know they're real people but they're also you know they're real like you know what they, what happened to their lives was real and that you know our lady has power you see isn't that interesting yeah. they're real and she has power to help you yeah absolutely it's sort of distant everything's gone yeah you know, it's yeah. just god well i don't know what that is that's something i heard yeah. about and you know if everything's receded in, in, into a into you don't even can't see. I, I saw a picture of Saint Anthony, or I saw a statue 
holding the, the baby. Yeah. Jesus. And I was just very impressed by it. You yeah. Know, that you were allowed to be able to be in contact. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of just things like that. They've lost sort of the, the, the personal touch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing came from the humanists and um, mm. Hegel and all those. Mm. That you could see it. It didn't exist. Mm. I think they said we can't know it, so just put mm. it aside and move mm. on. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And that's the sort of the foundation of modern science. But modern science is a lot of the time only just someone's opinion. Mm. They have a structure that works for the moment. It not necessarily yeah. it may explain some things for a while, but when somebody yeah. else mm. comes along and says yeah. something. Okay. So other, yeah. Um, the, the, there's a there's a book uh, called uh, Gal- uh, The Church Was Right, Galileo Was Wrong. And uh, uh, by this guy Robert Sugenis, and he, he goes into that uh, mm. uh, how s- scientists uh, and start, you know, uh, Copernic is, uh, and mm. they were just repeating kind of old heresies from uh, Pythagoras about the sun, uh, and they uh, they they didn't uh, they didn't actually have even scientific proof. Uh, but their their bias was towards the uh, you know the mm. moving earth you know and, mm. and just mm. directly contradicted the the scripture, mm. uh, and the thing was that the the Pope rightly called that a heresy, mm. and that's the thing uh, now that that's today is an embarrassment to the modern church, but it, it's still right it's still a, a pronouncement by the a governing Pope you know uh, on a on Galileo, you know. Um, but Galileo was, um, he was wrong on some things, even by modern standards. That's yeah. And, uh, but he's very, I don't know if you've read the book, um, Galileo's Daughter. It's based on yeah. letters between him and a daughter. Right. A nun. And he, in fact, he never stopped me believing, believing Catholic yeah. or anything, but he was very fu- sure of himself. Mm. And if someone disagreed mm. with him, he would go to the worst parts of yeah. and have, write a song about them, destroy yeah. their reputation. Mm. So he, but I'm just saying that yeah. it was a sort of bit of his ego, other people using him and yeah. all sorts of things. But the, the one thing they objected to was him using the Bible yeah. to support his ideas. Yeah. yeah. So in other words, that, um, you, can have, you may have crazy ideas, but please don't be using our scripture. Yeah, to yeah. Defend, yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, but the and then the thing is with Newton and the Royal Society, mm. uh, again they they proclaimed oh gravity has shown that the you know Earth must go around the sun, but again they it didn't prove that at all like you know and now we know it it doesn't prove it because uh, we you know we have now another theory called general you know relativity, but uh, yeah so. Um, but again, they they make these claims, you know, uh, and then say, "Oh, we prove that the Bible is is wrong," you know, and they convinced many clergy uh, as well that they were right, and so uh, the popes and uh, uh, slowly kind of uh, uh, opened up towards uh, this whole idea, the uh, heliocentric that the, the earth is moving, you know, around the sun. A view and uh, a, and Saint Paul talks in the Bible about a law, you know, that is so uh, uh, clever that uh, uh, even many of the elect will believe it. Mm. And I think that's heliocentrism, mm. you know, and uh, evolutionary as well. Cause they they all go in hand in hand, you know, mm. um, and the the, the heliocentrism. Uh, evolution and the Big Bang they're, they're like the pillars of what's called liberalism our liberal society that we have today this relativistic society and mm-hmm. uh, so and I, I and I think that's why uh, modernists don't like the idea you know any ideas that the, the Bible is the truth because it's directly against their the, the pillars of their society, like you know, with all they might get annoyed, <laughs> they, they would get yeah, greatly annoyed. I'd say, it's like the thing <laughs> in theology the idea of um, the Thomistic idea of being rather than becoming. So, the modernist is a, 
becoming a person. So it's everything is coming about. And so it's, it's an evolutionary idea which has been condemned in the past. Like Tehar de Sharidan and all yeah. this had that idea, but it has been condemned. The point is, is that God is perfect. He has no need to change. He is perfect. He mm-hmm. just is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't change. But the modern idea is that he does change. And you'll find very odd things, mm-hmm. even in yeah. early mm-hmm. official documents, yeah. saying mm-hmm. really odd things about yeah. that. So it's about being. It's yeah. not about becoming. Yeah. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. for example, St. Thomas Aquinas would use the example of like an acorn or something. Yeah. The whole lot of what the acorn is going to, the oak tree and everything is contained in that. Mm. Um, yeah. acorn and, and it's normal uh, yeah. growth it's not actually something that's becoming something else it's mm. actually just mm. a following fulfilling its purpose yeah. its, um, being uh, yeah it's after being created by god it's yeah. actually going to follow its own rules it's not becoming in the sense of turning into something else you know so it's 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 um it's it's quite subtle it just moves away and yeah. off from i mean the yeah. classical sort of theology or philosophy was just to sort of pin that down that we had a c- correct view it's just a, using language to mm-hmm. try and explain something but yeah. when we move away from that evolution and that idea goes through everything so it's not just right. yeah. it's theology it's philosophy it's a lot of things it's well oh, and it's how we view it it's, it's a world view so evolution is it's a world view like you know and it's it, it, it's a nat- naturalistic it's, materialistic yeah, yeah. world view mm-hmm. um and it's contrary to the Bible, basically. Mm. Uh, yeah. So and and so the, yeah, so that uh, all of that Helio said opens the stuff up to modernism, you know. Whereas we need, if we want Catholic revival, I believe we have to embrace again the Bible as a, a, a and and the Word of God as authoritative. Mm. You know that it's God is knows what he's talking about. And it's the truth, you know, it, it, it's truth about science, you know, about archaeology, about history. Uh, it's, it's the truth about everything, really, you know. That St. Thomas Aquinas wasn't taught, they're saying that this, that Thomas Aquinas was wrong and this and that, but St. Thomas Aquinas wasn't seeking to explain how the world began or any of those things which scientists play around with. He was actually trying to explain about what God is doing and all of this, which is a different thing. Do you know what I mean? That's not, what I'm trying to say is that scientists are just playing around with ideas about how to explain something or not explain yeah. it. But it's not actually the same thing as saying that God is at the centre of something and what he is doing. It's a different... Well, I, I, yeah, so they... Yeah. They're not actually talking about God. Yeah, I know. There's, 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 but it, it, it does. So... But the thing is, the uh, how we understand mm. the creation of the world actually affects mm. how we view everything else. Yeah. Mm. So you, you, it, it's disingenuous to say, "Oh, we're we're not saying that God didn't make the world. We're just saying it came about in a different way." <laughs> that is that, that it's the Bible. Uh, the Bible doesn't claim to know uh, say how it came about, but it's dis, it's disingenuous because how we how we view the world. Is directly uh, related to, uh, um, to the, how we understand its uh, foundations and its origins. So, if you have a, a an evolutionary uh, evolutionary worldview, mm. yeah, you know the world is just random and meaningless. That's your that's your worldview, you know, uh, and that's quite different to uh, uh, saying that. Uh, the world being created by God, the you know, with earth at, at the center of it, and man as the mm-hmm. crown of his salvation, of his of his creation. Uh, that's a huge different picture, you know. Uh, and created perfect, you know, and man has fallen. So, uh, whereas the uh, evolution uh, worldview is death is there from the beginning. You know, there there was death reigned, you know, from the beginning, and there was no perfect really creation. Uh, it was just you know experimental and and randomness, you know. But I think uh, the idea was that um, that scientists are just playing around with ideas to explain something, but they're not actually talking about God at all. So I mean, and most of them. So that's actually what they say is not relevant to mm. um, what. God is doing because they're not actually engaging with the whole 
uh, notion that God exists. You know what I mean? They're just scientists oh. playing around with ideas. No, I, well, I don't think he can just uh, <laughs> d d d dissociate because it does affect. Because uh, <laughs> well, most kids will tell you, they, 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 oh, we don't, like, you know, uh, the, the scientists have proved uh, uh, the, the Bible false. Mm -hmm. They believe that, you know. Uh, the, the number one mm -hmm. what reason why kids fall away from mass actually is because science mm -hmm. uh, disproves the Bible. Mm -hmm. universities they would have ideas and nobody would pay blind mission noses notice to them any more than they do in a lot of the subjects they have it's just because suddenly they attack the bible or something and they get this whole uh, promotion and so on even within the church i'd say normally speaking they're just people with ideas in little niches somewhere mm -hmm. uh, powerful well, no, sometimes, but that's not like, well, they are. But I'm, but I'm saying that because they speak to the current narrative right. before people that secular or the state would have actually burnt them at the stake for some right. of the things they're saying now. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's it's what I'm I, I'm what I'm trying to say is something different to what you're saying. I agree right. with you, but I'm just saying that um, the thing is is that the whole um, sort of secular side, the state, um, the various institutions and mm -hmm. so on, have taken up this idea. So if the scientist proves that. Mm. Um, something in the Bible doesn't exist. They all run with. Them. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not. So I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying. Yeah. There's a social or political yeah. social. Yeah. Aspect of this no, absolutely. To prove that God doesn't. Yeah. Exist. Oh no, absolutely. It's it's it's, it's prejudice the towards. Of God are always being the then it's the absence of. You know. You remove God, you remove love, and then you sort of lose the possibility mm, of yeah. being brought back in that humans are sacred or you know in the image of God, and therefore, yeah, well, I think to a certain extent, yeah, humans are expendable anyway. Yeah, 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 that's a very important point, yeah, especially about the love, you know. Feel angry, you see, and I, I work with kids, and they can feel angry. And I felt angry towards parents at times, and you know, and you, you remember, common act of love brought you into the world anyway, yeah. and brings you back to your senses, yes. and opens up the doors yeah. to forgiveness. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that's absent. That you know, you see, you see so much around in the world. You see good and bad, but you know, you can, you kind of think that the bad could get very bad unless you. It's getting worse. Yeah, because people are losing their. Yeah. Like once they, ah, uh, like you say, once they lose the sense of God. Yeah. They're losing the sense yeah. of what oh, humanity is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, exactly. You know, yeah. This, like the list of things. So yeah. Because yeah. I've ordered, I got a book there now. A friend of mine recommended it who teaches medical ethics. I said, is there a book that your average adult can read? Because yeah. going through the list of things, so there's so many of these issues now, mm. life issues. Mm. from the beginning to end and all the corruption of people yeah. you know the moral corruption yeah. of people and yeah. so on the, the attack is unbelievable yeah. you're expendable when you're yeah. the main citizen to finish mm. the whole planet sort of that's why I, I think the, we can be the antidote to all of that if we just live the mass as, a, as it is you know yeah. to 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 you know experience the, the rising sun at mass you know let the the rays of forgiveness flow over you, you know, and change you. Uh, and uh, at the consecration. consecration, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, if we if we live that out, we we can be a complete antidote to the all oh, that's collapsing uh, uh, around us. Yeah. Now in a fallen world, yeah. And I found that very profound. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and we can see it all around. Yeah, yeah. and and it's there's a a, a, a lovely quote. I, I get one of Ratzinger's quotes there. He talks about the um uh, uh, see if I have uh very and. Um, Did I write it down? And um, he's talking about sacrifice and worship and uh, Howard, God bless. Uh, I finish up. I just finish up with this. Uh, 
Take, take care there, uh, Howard. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, um, so he talks about sacrifices, the essence, uh, in its essence, is simply uh, returning to live and therefore uh, divinize uh, or worship our worship uh, now as a new aspect, uh, the healing of the wounded freedom, atonement, purification, deliverance from estrangement. So he's, he's saying, he, originally worship, like, you know, in, in the Garden of Eden, you know, it, uh, it was to, uh, to say like this communication, this communion between God and man, you know, and creation was part of that. Uh, and then, but then we fell, like, you know, uh, so now worship has to heal the, the wounds, yeah. you know, uh, the estrangement, the purification, you know, uh, bring us back to the uh, where we were with Adam, you know. Uh, so that, that's that's it, folks. Uh, thanks very much for for coming. Yeah.